In this forecast, a big pattern change is going to lead to some wacky weather on both sides of the country, including snowfall on both sides and heavy rainfall across the west. A strong Pacific jet may even lead to the possibility of severe thunderstorms in southern Texas on Sunday. Everything you need to know on Project Gladiator. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Project Gladiator weekly overlook and today I'll be covering the weather for January 28th until around February 3rd or February 4th. So let's start off with the jet stream pattern where we are expected to see our weather activity for this week uh, we are expected to have a very different uh, change in the jet stream pattern this week as we are expected to see a high pressure system that is expected to uh, cover a lot of the Rockies as well as the, as well as the central plains and that is going to be forcing the jet stream into a little bit more of an omega like symbol and this is what we call an omega block because uh, we have troughs on either side of the country and that's where we are expected to be watching for uh, for uh, for weather this week is going to be on both halves of the country and not really towards the center. Uh, for the eastern half of the United States, we are expected to see multiple troughs uh, come out of Canada here, and um, that is going to introduce quite a bit of cold air as well as uh, quite a bit of drier air uh, and that's going to push a lot of the moisture out of the United States, which is uh, not going to allow for any fuel for severe thunderstorms across the eastern half of the United States. So we aren't really expected to see all that much of a risk for severe thunderstorms across the eastern half of the United States. But we are going to be watching for the possibility of uh, a lot of snowfall and the potential for some rain showers across this region. Uh, that's going to be the main uh, primary risk uh, for a lot of the Ohio River Valley, New England corridor, and potentially even down into the eastern seaboard. And then uh, across the Pacific Coast, we are expecting to see a strong Pacific jet, which is going to be uh, impacting uh, the Pacific coast, leading to a ton of rain showers um, and potentially snowfall further inland towards the Rockies. And this is going to lead to almost nonstop rainfall for a lot of the Pacific coast. Um, we may see a couple breaks on some days, but overall it is expected to be almost nonstop and we may have to watch for the possibility of some flooding across the Pacific coast due to that. And uh, we are expected to see a very strong Pacific jet that is going that is currently situated across uh, uh, the Pacific just to the north of Hawaii with strengths uh, upwards of 140 150 miles per hour which is absolutely insane and we are gonna have to watch this uh, for severe thunderstorms later on uh, into uh, some er next week and potentially the week after that uh, mainly uh, mainly towards the end of this week into early uh, next week uh, we are expected to see a trough come out of this as it feeds into the uh, southern United States uh, just to the south of that high pressure system and uh, this is gonna be a very powerful trough in May allow for the possibility of severe thunderstorms uh, and we will have to watch for that uh, on Sunday. However, it is really uh, coming down to how much instability we are expected to see across uh, southern Texas and the southern central plains and I'll go pr uh, pretty in depth on the risk for severe thunderstorms across southern Texas. Taking a look at our composite reflectivity, I'm going to be going over the when and where you should be able to see our snowfall, our rain uh, showers, and potentially severe thunderstorms across southern Texas. So let's start off with what we are currently seeing as of right now. We are seeing a low pressure system that led to uh, severe thunderstorms earlier uh, yesterday, and that is going to be moving out into the Atlantic Ocean. However, in the low levels, as air advects to the north of that low pressure system, it is going to be turned into snow as it is moving into a much colder environment, and that is leading to a a ton of snowfall across the New England corridor and Ohio River Valley. That's not going to be the only time we are expected to see snowfall. Uh, we are expected to see another low pressure system that is going to impact a lot of the Midwest and a lot of the Ohio River Valley, potentially even down in the eastern seaboard around the 31st. And then uh, around the 31st and the uh, 1st of February. And then on the, uh, the 2nd of February and into the uh, 3rd of February, we are expected to see another trough that is going to impact a lot of the New England corridor, potentially down to the Ohio River Valley, leading to some rain showers as well as some snowfall mixed in with that and is going to be clearing out with some spotty snow showers um, across the New England corridor around the 3rd. And then across southern Texas, we are expected to see uh, a lot of widespread rainfall across a lot of the uh, southern central plains, uh, and potentially some severe thunderstorms further down south uh, towards... Um, towards southern Texas and then we may even be able to see some snow uh, snowfall for some of the southern Rockies and then um 
uh, and then let's go back to the very beginning and take a look at the timing for storms across the Pacific coast. So let's start off with what we are seeing as of right now. We are seeing a low pressure system, which is uh, kind of advecting into uh, more so into uh, Alaska and Canada, maybe some rainfall for a lot of the uh, northern Pacific coast. But then on the 29th and the 30th, we are expected to see a cold front impact leading to some rainfall. And then we are expected to see a break until around the th uh, 31st when we are expected to see a powerful low pressure system impact and lead to a lot of widespread rainfall for a lot of the Pacific coast. And as that moves further inland, that is going to be turning into snow for a lot of the second into the third. Um, and then on the fourth, we are expected to see another powerful low pressure system, which is going to impact um, further down to the south, more so around California, leading to some uh, snow showers mixed in with a lot of rainfall. Taking a look at our temperatures and how our temperatures are expected to be impacted by uh, these troughs in this high pressure system. Uh, starting off the central plains uh, where that high pressure system is currently located, we are expected to see it warm up quite a bit. Uh, potentially see temperatures upwards of the 50s, potentially getting close uh, to the upper 60s, uh, potentially as far north as... Um, as North Dakota, South Dakota, and Montana is again going to be getting quite warm across the central plains this week uh, because of that uh, high pressure system. And then across the eastern half of the United States, uh, because we are ex expected to be seeing those uh, those different troughs and in introducing much colder air, uh, we are expected to see uh, some fairly chilly temperatures around the 40s or 50s with uh, temperatures that are going to be getting below freezing for the New England corridor. Uh, however, we are expected to see a strong cold blast with the final trough. Uh, towards the end of the week, uh, which is going to be introducing temperatures that may be getting uh, below freezing as far south as Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina at night, as well as across a lot of the central plains in the Midwest, cooling it down quite a bit. Uh, however, during the day, we may be able to see temperatures that are going to be getting below freezing as far south as Ohio and uh, Pennsylvania. And then across the Pacific coast, we are expected to see cool down quite a bit because of those uh, various frontal systems that we are expected to see impacted. Uh, or impact this region, we are expected to see temperatures that are going to potentially uh, drop from the 50s, potentially down to the 30s and 40s. Uh, however, the uh, basin in central, uh, central California may be able to continue to see temperatures that may be getting upwards of the 40s and uh, 50s as well. So uh, it is going to be getting quite cool on both sides of the country, while it may stay quite warm across the central plains. Taking a look at our total snowfall accumulation, generally where we are expected to see the majority of our snowfall for this week, again, we are expected to see the majority of our activity across the eastern half of the United States and across the Rockies. So let's start off with the eastern half of the United States. Um, as of right now, we are expected to see uh, that that current that currently impacting winter storm, which is going to be dropping a, a lot of snowfall across the New England corridor. Um, however, it isn't really expected to melt due to how cold it is expected to be uh, for the vast majority this week. And then um, on top of that, with the various amount of uh, uh, troughs and snowstorms that we may be able to see impact the New England corridor, we are expected to see the potential of maybe upwards of um, upwards of eight inches of snowfall, potentially getting very close to a foot across a lot of the New England corridor, which is where we are expected to see the majority of our snowfall. But we may be able to see some snowfall for Michigan, some of the Midwest and the New England corridor, as well as along the Appalachian region, potentially down into Virginia as well. And then again, we are expected to see an insane amount of snowfall for a lot of the New Eng or a lot of the uh, Rocky Mountains as all that uh, rain showers. Uh, moves across the Rockies and turns into snow in a much colder environment. Taking a look at what the WBC currently has issued for excessive snowfall, keep in mind that this is um, uh, for the probability of greater than 4 inches. So let's start off with today where we are seeing the New England corridor get impacted by that winter storm. So we may be able to see uh, some snowfall that may reach greater than 4 inches. And then uh, around day 3, uh, which is 3 days out, around the uh, 30th, we are expected to see some snowfall for uh, for Northern California there that may be able to reach uh, greater than 4 inches in some isolated areas. However, for day 4 to day 7, uh, you can tell that we are expected to have uh, some snowfall for the New England corridor. Um, but you can tell by far that the vast majority of our snowfall is expected to be across uh, the Rocky Mountains associated with all that rainfall that's going to be turning into snow as it moves into a colder environment. Taking a look at our instability, or in other words, how much fuel for severe thunderstorms we are expected to see across uh, the United States this week. Again, due to the amount of drier air and colder air that we are expected to see introduced 
uh, across uh, both uh, both the western and eastern side of the United States. We aren't really expected to see all that much of a risk for severe thunderstorms, but we may be able to see at least one day uh, for the possibility of severe thunderstorms, and that's going to be across southern Texas, uh, where we may be able to have quite a bit of surface instability uh, across southern Texas. Um, uh, potentially upwards of 8,000 to, uh, sorry, 800 to 900, uh, which is overall a little bit more on the uh, lower end, but is still ample to support the possibility of severe thunderstorms. So again, we will have to watch Southern Texas on Sunday on the uh, the 3rd of February, February for the possibility of severe thunderstorms. Taking a look at our supercell composite models, uh, these models uh, help us with uh, generally uh, what we are expected to see as far as severe thunderstorms and gives us kind of a general idea of what the probability of severe thunderstorms may look like across uh, southern Texas. And you can uh, you can tell that uh, supercell composites are in compliance with the potential of some severe thunderstorms across southern Texas, especially with power of the trough and uh, the amount of uh, instability that we have, which is going to be ample enough for severe thunderstorms. And again, with the power of that trough, uh, supercell composites are indicating that we may have the possibility of severe thunderstorms across southern Texas on Sunday, which we will really have to watch for. Taking a look at what the SBC or the Storm Prediction Center has currently issued as far as severe thunderstorms, notice how for the next three days uh, we don't have anything forecasted as far as thunderstorms or any general thunderstorms that may not necessarily be severe. However, we can also take a look at our uh, four to uh, four to eight uh, day outlooks. Uh, it's kind of rare that we have a, a outlook on our four to day eight. Um, uh, outlooks uh, unless SBC if, is confident enough. Uh, however, uh, almost the majority of these days are indicating that we are expected to see a very lo uh, very low end threat for severe thunderstorms um, indicated by potential being too low. However, on day seven and day eight, around day uh, around uh, seven days out to day uh, to eight days out, so around the third to the fourth uh, of February, it does say predictability too low. So there may be the potential for severe thunderstorms in place but the SBC isn't confident enough to issue an area. Something I do want to mention uh, before I go towards the end of this video is um, what this trough is expected to look like after it impacts the Texas region. So after the 4th mainly, so into early next week, uh, that trough that is expected to lead to the possibility of severe thunderstorms for southern Texas, we are expected to see it track through a lot of the Gulf of Mexico, leading to some rain showers across a lot of the Gulf Coast there. Um, and we may have the potential for some uh, snowstorms uh, across a lot of the Dixie states. So we may be able to see the potential for some snowstorms across uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and into Georgia. However, this is still highly conditional and very far out. Um, but it is really cool to see that we may be able to see snowstorms that far south. Uh, again, this is highly conditional, and right now models are indicating that may be very minimal, but some other model runs have been indicating that may be a little bit bigger than what uh, we are currently seeing. So again, we are going to have to watch for the possibility of snowfall from Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia into early next week, but it really is extremely conditional, and it comes down to how far north or south that this low pressure system is expected to track as well as how much cold air we are expected to see blast uh, down uh, out of the north. So again, the, we're going to have to have the, uh, those two things uh, come together to really support the possibility of a snowstorm, but it does look possible for some of the Dixie states. Something I do want to talk about before I end this video is the GoFundMe for Project Gladiator. The link for the GoFundMe for Project Gladiator is in the description. The purpose of Project Gladiator is to raise money so we can uh, turn a Jeep Gladiator into an insanely powerful and insanely capable storm chasing beast that will gather information from some of the strongest tornadoes. Uh, I'm talking potentially upwards of EF5 strength and it will lead to... Um, big meteorological uh, breakthroughs and research in meteorolo uh, meteorology and the research on tornadoes. So if you do want to help towards the cause, the link to the GoFundMe is in the description if you do want to donate. Now that I've told you the weather, please go down to the description and check out the social for Project Gladiator and join the Discord for any updates on Project Gladiator. If you live in any of the areas I covered for this week, please stay weather alert for the time being, mainly southern Texas. 
Um, if you notice any, anything might have been wrong with this forecast or you'd like to uh, make a suggestion or ask a question, please leave a comment. I do read them. Two other channels that I highly suggest you check out are One Nation Weather and Weather Watcher. The links to their channels will be in the description. Weather Watcher does do forecast videos for Europe if you are interested in those. And hopefully I'll be able to see you guys tomorrow with another forecast.